Hey there, Halloween is fast approaching and this is my absolute favorite day to celebrate with my students. Being in the Halloween spirit reminds me of celebrating with my own kiddos. We had an annual costume party and each of my kids got to invite 10 friends and the adults usually came to and it became an event that friends young and old looked forward to every year and asked me, when are you doing your Halloween party? So, complete with pumpkin carving, lots of great food, I still have the Halloween serving stuff to remind me every year. My kids are grown up now and out of the house. In fact, they're 26 and almost 28, but I still love Halloween. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to teach the ORF arrangement for Spooky Scary Skeletons. And if you are not part of my email community, make sure you join that because that's where we will find all of the lesson plans that uh, will be lesson plan, I should say. I share a free lesson plan every month. And this month I'm sharing two, and next month I'll share two, and the month after I'll share two for the holidays. So I'm going to be sharing the lesson plan for Spooky Scary Skeletons for free. You can find it on YouTube, and I'm also going to show you lots of fun manipulatives to use at this time of the year. Because, you know what? We need to do all that. I'm Jeanette Shorey. I'm a 22-year veteran National Board Certified Music Teacher. I am also an Arts Integration Specialist and I love, love, love designing Halloween activities. In fact, if you looked at my Teachers Pay Teachers store, you would see that um, probably like the ones that aren't storybook lessons are all Halloween, except for maybe one or two others. I go live every Tuesday right here at 4.30 Central. If you are watching this on YouTube and you want to catch the live version, it's on my Facebook page, and I will share those links in the comments below. But you can find me at Instagram. That is Stories That Sing, the number four and the letter U, Stories That Sing for You. You can find me at Stories That Sing on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can find me at Stories That Sing and More. If you are not watching this live, Stories That Sing and More. Plus, I have a private Facebook group where I share special tips and tricks all about literacy skills and integrating them into the music classroom. And if you join my Facebook group, my private Facebook group, which is called Stories That Sing for Teachers, before Thursday, you will get the added bonus of getting a... Um, lesson on, well actually not a lesson, but all kinds of Halloween storybook recommendations. So that is this Thursday at 5.30 Central. So I've got some tips for you today and I'm trying something a little new. Not all of it's going through, but I'm going to give this a try. So we have five tips today that I'm going to share with you. And these are tips because teachers, I know what happens when you plan those Halloween activities, guess what? The classroom teachers are planning their activities too and they're sugaring those kiddos up and then they're sending them to you. So we know that behavior can be really tricky. So part of what I'm sharing with you today is some tips to keep things a little more calm and a little more um, just manageable behavior wise. So these are the tips and tricks. First of all, keep it moving. I'm going to go through all five of them and then I will review them at the end. So the first one is keep it moving. Let's see if this is going to work. Nope. Oh, there it is. Look, I've got a fancy little, a fancy little text. So the way we keep it moving is you want to make sure that you are, everything you're doing is moving super fast. You want to make sure you're completely planned out. I find that my Monday classes get, um, I don't know if anybody else has this problem, and if you do, please feel free to comment because I'm hoping that somebody else has this problem. My Monday classes or my first lesson classes do not tend to be my most polished and smooth classes. By Wednesday, I'm like, 
and everything goes really smooth, smoothly, but my Monday classes, not so much. Hopefully I'm not the only one that that happens to. You may want to sort of go through and rehearse your lesson um, ahead of time for those Monday kiddos if you have time. I know I never do, but we just try to keep it moving. I try to make sure I've got everything set up in a PowerPoint. If I don't have a PowerPoint, I put up my learning goals that way, not only if my principal comes in as a surprise, I've got those up there, but also it helps the kids move along with me and it also helps keep me on track because I tend to get scattered and I, if you've seen my Facebook lives, you know I get scattered and I go down the rabbit hole. So you wanna make sure and keep everything in line that is the best way to keep things moving is to have everything prepared, have all your music queued up, have all of your screens open. If you've got a YouTube you're using, make sure you have that open and queued up. Just make sure it stays moving because as soon as you stop, bam, you're going to have issues. Second thing, keep it simple. Let's see if this is coming up. Come on. Is it coming up? Ah, there we go. Okay, I figured it out. <laughs> now I know where to press. Keep it simple. I was doing the precursor to my spooky scary skeletons today with my fifth graders and I showed them that first slide and if you have this lesson plan, you know it looks like, oh my gosh. So I first of all go through it step by step and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But I also have my kids take all the keys off that they don't need and I give them the specific pattern to play. I know it's really great if they're reading some music and that's totally something we talk about and we do. But when I'm doing a Halloween activity, I want to keep it simple because they've got so much else going on and if you make their brains work too hard, they're going to totally check out and they're going to be doing everything that you don't want them to. So you want to use basic skills. You want to use things that are easy to read. You want to use everything you can to keep it simple. Number three, look at that, fancy. You want to use manipulatives. So I brought all of my stuff with me, not all, all, but um, not only do I use manipulatives, but I've got all of my fun. Now, this may not work if you've got littles. I've got bigs. I've got fourth and fifth graders, and I decorate my room up really cool, and then I make it as dark as humanly possible. Um, I have actually bought some, like, shiny, thick, I don't know where I got it. I can't remember. Probably Amazon because that's like my go-to. Um, and I cut it to exactly the size of my windows. So I just stick it up there and I'm done. I used to do all this paper and I mean, it was a, a mess, but I wanted it as dark as possible in there because guess what? I use those black lights and those are super fun. And I can't wait till next week when my students come in and they're like, oh, what are we doing? So it's going to be fun. So I, I decorate my room, not a lot, but I, I put literally, I just put these dealies up and then I may put up, I don't know, like a pumpkin or something like that. Whatever I have, I just bring it in. I, I spend literally five minutes doing a little bit of decorating. And then I've got, let's see, what did I bring here? I've got these brand new fun dealies. These are my pointers and I love to use these and um, they're, let me, let me open them up so I can show you. They're, they're, I haven't opened these ones yet because these ones um, I just found. I used them in my other school. See that? Is that so cool? So we use that to point our notes or whatever else you can think of to use them for. Um, obviously, if you're doing, well, I guess if you're doing mallets, you could probably still use them. Um, so they're just fun. And I have, let's see, somewhere I have, maybe I didn't bring it down with me. I hope I did. Oh, here. Okay, so I've got some um, glow-in-the-dark glasses. I think I ordered these. I can't remember. 
I'll tell you later where I order things. I've got some glow-in-the-dark spiders and some bats and then all of my characters, no matter what I'm doing, are going to be glow in the dark. So if you've got littles and you're doing, um, I don't know, like the little old lady who wasn't afraid of anything, um, you can still use glow in the dark. Look how cute that is. Is that so cute? And I've got my glow in the dark cute vampire. So if you've got littles, they don't have to be scary things. I've got my glow in the dark cat. These are all from different things. Look, there's a glow in the dark frog. I don't really use him for that, but um, I've got my really cute glow in the dark witch. And she's got a glow in the dark broom. And we've got our glow in the dark monster. And he's not really very scary looking, right? That's pie. I don't use that for that. <laughs> there's another monster. I don't know. Oh, there's my skeletons. These are the skeletons I use for spooky, scary skeletons. And then I've got my ghost. This lady's a little scary. I can use her with my fourth and fifth graders, but I cannot use her. And then this one is pretty scary too. And I honestly can't remember where I got this, but I just took like my whole bag of glow in the dark stuff. Um, and so that's my bag of glow in the dark stuff. And then I also wanted to show you, I bought these. These are really cool. I love for the kids to put these on and we use them. Um, they get to see them glowing in the dark while they're playing. And I've also got just white gloves and you probably have time to to order these if you want to so white gloves are awesome for the black lights of course and ooh, I've got my necklaces so sometimes I just have them put the necklaces on which is pretty awesome and let's see what else do I have oh there's another a skeleton glove mm -hmm. and then look I tape my drumsticks and we use drumsticks um, sometimes I use drumsticks with uh, my students for Halloween activities. I am not doing that this year, but I do intend, I have a bunch of this tape left, so I do intend to use it for my mallets. So we are going to do glow-in-the-dark mallets and glow-in-the-dark gloves, and gosh, I must have, I thought I brought it down. Oh, there they are. And I have a guitar class that I teach live and in person at my school. And look what I bought them because I told them they could wear their costumes I bought them glow-in-the-dark picks so they're gonna get to use their glow-in-the-dark picks for something I haven't quite planned that out yet but um, so that that should be really cool um, if you have things that you use manipulatives that you use I was also thinking it would be really fun to use some um, scarves and, you know, if you can find, like, glow-in-the-dark scarves, that neon scarf thingy, um, that is an excellent thing to do, too. Now, I may have a problem. Oh, yay, no, I thought it died, but it didn't die. My notes are on my phone here. <laughs> so, um, black lights are super awesome fun. I highly recommend that you invest in a couple of black lights because... First of all, they are so much fun for your students. And second, they that that's tip number four, and um, somehow it didn't make it onto here, so I apologize for that. Um, so black lights are lots of fun. You do have to make your classroom completely dark. I have um, some of those lamps. I hate the overhead lights. So, and, and I've actually heard and read that it's better to use like lamps and things like that because it's more calming atmosphere for the students. So I've got those lights that you can get that have like, they're, they're all these branches and I bought black lights. So we just twist those black lights and then I have like three or four strips of black lights. Now my PE coaches happen to have black lights as well and they're probably using them next week. But if not, I may borrow one or two. And you really, my classroom's kind of small, but even if you have a large classroom, 
it doesn't take very many black lights to um, decorate the whole class and I'm telling you the students love it. Now, glow-in-the-dark stuff. Where can you get it? So, these are some places you can get it. Oriental Trading has tons of it. Amazon, of course, also has tons of it. I like to visit my dollar store, my Dollar Tree, whatever you have this time of the year because they have all kinds of fun stuff. And when I go into the dollar store, I already Almeida, oh my gosh, the woman, I don't know if she still does, she probably does, but she used to visit the dollar store all the time because she would always say she's from Florida and I'm from Florida, so I got the privilege of seeing her often. And she would always bring in um, things and be like, I got this at the dollar store. And you would go and you would find it at the dollar store because kind of they all have the same similar kinds of stuff. So I highly recommend it this time of the year. Just go to your Dollar Tree, your Dollar Store, your Dollar General, whatever, and invest in some of that fun stuff because it's going to give you ideas. So, you know, you've got your necklaces and you have all those little things that you can find at the Dollar Tree or the Dollar General, whatever. So, or Oriental Trading or Amazon. Those really are my go-tos. I will tell you that the lamps I got at Target and um, I do visit Walmart as well sometimes. So those are kind of my go-tos. So I am going to now go through a little bit of this PowerPoint with you. So I'm hoping... Let's see, I have to, here we go. Okay, so this PowerPoint has, are you seeing it? I'm not sure you're seeing it. Let's see. No, you're not seeing it. Now you're seeing it. There you go. Okay, so this is, um, I like to make a, um, a storybook lesson out of this, and I find that you can make a storybook lesson legit out of anything. So I put in all of the, the chorus and the verses on spooky, scary skeletons, and then we talk about some of this vocabulary. Now, I'm not going to do this on the Halloween week lesson plan because I want all of my stuff to go there. So I might do this the week before. Um, so you've got doom and screech and shudder, and these are words that students do not know a lot of times. And if you want to hear more about how to integrate these storybook lessons into your curriculum and also not degrade your curriculum and use all kinds of great music skills, I do have a new course that's coming out called Simply Literacy Skills, and I'll tell you a little more about that later. Um, so we've got all these definitions, and then, uh-oh, don't even tell me, oh, there we go, okay, sarcophagus and supernatural, I mean, there are a ton of great vocabulary words in here, so you can use all of this to enhance the vocabulary. Then we've got our characters, we've got our skeletons, our ghosts, our spirits, our monsters, um, our goblins, uh, these are just possible vampire, vampires, zombies, mummies, skeletons, whatever you want to print out in different neon colors, and we, you can do some movement with that. Now, the, I am not going to go over that here. I am actually going to go over my um, what I do here. So we've got um, staccato and legato, and so I pick out the characters that can be staccato and legato, and notice how I've got some great vocabulary, some good Italian words going on here. So, and I like to teach staccato like this, staccato, short and detached. And I talk to the students about how the skeleton, the way that they move is kind of short and detached, and we talk all about that, and sometimes we might move it as well. Then I go like this, legato and we do smooth and connected so um, those are the ways that I teach staccato and legato and I use the mummy and the ghost mostly or the witch flying on her broom and those are my legatos so, so in spooky scary skeleton we've got um I'm trying to think um spooky scary skeletons that Da, 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 that's all staccato, right? And then 
we're so sorry skeletons i don't remember the words uh, they're up there but i don't want to do them right now so the um so the one part is staccato and the other part is legato and you can have the students move with their characters and that can be step number one if you have the time okay then step number two now i'm going to tell you with my students this year I am not splitting out, even with my fifth graders, into these different parts. I'm going to tell you how I'm doing it because I'm finding I need to keep things really, really simple for my students. And if you are not doing that and you're getting a lot of behavior, this is what I recommend. The students, as a rule, don't tend to be as savvy because they've missed school and they've missed socialization and all that good stuff. And I had a whole... Um, Last week or the week before, I did a whole um, Facebook Live on behavior all about how to deal with it and things that we can do to make it better. So if you didn't catch that one, send me a um, hashtag behavior and I will send you a link to it. Um, you can put that in the comments. Um, so we've got an alto xylophone part, we've got a bass metallophone part, and we've got a soprano xylophone part, or yeah, soprano xylophone part. I'm going to tell you, I am using xylophones and metallophones, period, end of story. That is, and, and my contrabass bars, that's all I'm going to do. So my contrabass bars are going to keep the steady beat, and um, the uh, this xylophone part You'll notice here what I point out to my students is the pattern. And I'll say to them, I know this looks like a lot. I actually had, I started teaching this today because I teach this part of it the week before. I tell them nothing about the song. And this week is the week that we're teaching this. And then next week, they'll be, they'll be kind of all familiar. Plus my ORF instruments will all be set up and ready to go. And, um, ooh, this is a mistake because these are supposed to be F sharps. I will have to go back in and fix that. Um, so before I send this lesson plan to my email community on Friday. Um, so we've got G, F, B, F, G, F, B. So we read the rhythm first all the way through. And then we read the the uh, notes in rhythm. And then I have my students come up. I've got one of those cool smart boards where they can come up and circle. So I'll say to them, look for some patterns. And then we get to talk all about how there are patterns in music. And I try to emphasize those patterns all the time so that they understand that once they learn one part, usually they know like a bunch more than they think. So. This is the part for the introduction, the interlude, and the coda, and I am going to teach this to probably half of my xylophones. I'm not going to split alto and soprano because my students are having trouble figuring out the difference between the alto and the soprano, and that is not something I want to take the time to do right now, although I probably could label them. That might be a good idea. <laughs> so we have... Uh, we read it, they circle the two patterns here, and then I say, what about here? Do we have a bigger pattern? Yes, we've got a bigger pattern there. Then I'm going to say to them, do you see this pattern? This is all you're playing all the way through. So even though it looks like a lot of notes, it's really not a lot of notes. And then what we do is we take our finger mallets, and everybody, not just, this is this is um, basic ORF. If you haven't taken the um, ORF level one, this is basic right out of the box that they teach you. You want to make sure that everybody gets to learn all of the parts. And if you have time to switch, that's great. But you don't want kiddos off here, you know, doing their own thing while you're teaching these other kiddos. So everybody gets to learn this part. And I use my finger mallets first. And then we do airplay. So I go like, oh, like, like you're doing air guitar, but we're doing airplay with our xylophones. And we do airplay and we do airplay all the way through. So G, F, B, F, G, F, B. And we repeat, repeat, right? And then finally we get to play. So that is the alto xylophone part. Then we have the bass metallophone, which is keeping sort of like another part to it. And... I haven't actually done this with my students yet this year. This one is a little bit tricky. So 
probably with this year's students, what I'm going to do is we're going to cut it. And I'm literally just going to cross that top line out or the bottom line, whichever you don't like or whichever one you like better. And we're just going to do double D, double A, double B like that. Okay. Now, I actually... And I'm going to have to skip this C sharp because I don't have C sharp in my current um, xylophone. So I don't I don't have those keys. So um, we are just going to do, I'm not even sure they have C sharp in, in the xylophones, but in the ORF, that is something good to research. If you know that, let me know because I'm not 100% sure if there is um, the ability to get C sharps, but I know I've got F sharp. So we'll probably do a whole note here and I'll just cross it right out and put a whole note down below and then I'll teach the students that part. Then we have the chorus. Now the kids when they saw this today were like oh my gosh that looks so hard. So let me tell you what I do and tomorrow I've got to put a note in my phone so I, for, so I remember to do this. What I do with this is I take off all, I have the students take off all the notes except for these notes. And what you end up with is like a pattern that goes bop, 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 bop. So it's, it's a pattern. And then I have them look at this, but then I show them on my xylophone, this is the pattern. So we go from here to here to here to here and back. Um, so I hope this makes sense. I may actually go on tomorrow and um, record so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. In fact, I will definitely do that because that's what I'm going to be doing with my students. So I'll just record exactly how I'm teaching them so you understand what I'm doing with this because I want it to be as simple as possible. This looks terrible for them and probably I, I may even um, just get rid of this part. I don't know. I'll see because the we'll see. I haven't taught this lesson in three or four years and I can tell you that the last group of students I had was savvy enough for this lesson but if your students aren't like mine aren't this year then we may do something different. I, of course I've got a class or two that are going to be able to totally do all this but I like to teach them those patterns because you want to keep it as simple as possible. Okay? Then we've got tambourines and maracas, okay? And those are going to happen on the chorus part. And you'll see here I've got that skeleton, right? And then um, this is another option. So if you don't want to do all of that ORF and you just want your students to play on the parts where that are staccato and legato, you can teach them these rhythms and you can just play that. So that is another option if you have classes that those ORF instruments are just not going to work for them. And let's see, and then we've got our listening map. Okay, so we go from um, the um, introduction to the first verse, to the chorus, to the second verse, to the interlude or the um, what do we call it in pop music? Why can't I think of it right now? The bridge. Um, to the chorus, to, um, I think that's another verse, and then um, into the coda or the um, outro or whatever you want to call it. So we've got our introduction, our interlude, our coda, our chorus, our verses. So that's the key for the listening map. And all of this is included. And then if you want to print out these monsters and minions, I've got those there for you. And then this is my credit page because I get a lot of my clip art right off of Teachers Pay Teachers. So um, feel free to visit these peoples and get some good stuff from them. So that is the entire lesson plan in a nutshell. And um, I hope that that wasn't too fast and too confusing. I promise you that tomorrow I'm going to pull a note in my phone so I remember to do it right on my calendar. That's how I have to work. Um, that I will make sure and show you that pattern on the xylophones and exactly how I teach it with my students if you are interested in teaching those ORF parts. I'm Jeanette Shorey. I go live here every Tuesday 
4.30 Central Time, usually till about 5. If I'm doing something a little bit more detailed, it might be 5.15. Either catch me live, give me a hashtag live, or catch me on the replay, give me a hashtag replay. If you want, um, I can't remember, I had told you to hashtag me with, with a request, but I can't remember what it was right now because ugh, my brain. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I taught the last two days and the kiddos are, I don't know, they were more crazy than normal. I think it's a full moon tomorrow, though. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Oh, yes. If you would like to have that lesson plan for free and many other lesson plans, at least one lesson plan every month and for the next three months, two freebies a month, I will put a link to my lesson plan sampler. Not only do you get access to my email list where I share all those free lessons, I share resources, I share great tips. I also will send you two storybook lessons free. One of them is All Are Welcome. The other one is The Very Quiet Cricket. That's in honor of um, Eric Carl, who passed away this summer, I think it was. And I'm pretty sure it was the summer. And then you also get a bonus outdoor activity. So if you would like those, if you're on YouTube, I will share the link there as well. And if you want to join me for some storybook recommendations for Halloween, I will be doing that in my private Facebook group, Stories That Sing for Teachers. You can probably search it, but I'll also put a link to that. I think that's everything I wanted to tell you today. If you have questions, please, 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 I really mean this reach out to me. I am so happy to help you with any struggles, anything you need, and I hope you've gotten some great tips out of this. Have a fabulous afternoon, and I'll see you next Tuesday at 4.30.